Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. <clears throat> Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, grant us weak eyes for the little worth and eyes clear-sighted in all of your truth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. These three days of the tritium Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter are, of course, about Jesus, his words and actions, his suffering and crucifixion, and his being raised from the dead by the Spirit of God. These various events in Jesus' life occurred not in a vacuum, but within the context of others. The disciples, for instance, and also the nameless crowds. Rather than being extras in a play centered on Jesus, figures like Peter and Pilate and Mary Magdalene are critical to the story itself. How they relate to Jesus, their conversations, and their responses to him make the story of Jesus what it is. There is no Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, there is no Easter without them. In the familiar reading of Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet that we just heard, it is an interaction with Peter that helps us understand why this action by Jesus is so significant. Peter's protests of Jesus' action of washing feet is not the first or the last time St. John recalls 
Peter openly challenging Jesus. Peter is passionate. That much we know. But passion is really all a person needs. There is also patience and trust. And as he does elsewhere, Jesus responds to Peter's passion not by simplifying why Jesus is doing what he's doing, but by moving discussion to a deeper level. In response to Peter's emphatic objection, you shall never wash my feet, Jesus insists, unless I wash you, you will not belong to me. What began as Peter questioning the appropriateness of the teacher watch, washing the feet of the students, a reversal of social norms, if there ever was one, becomes a lens to understand the events to come. Foot washing and crucifixion become mutually interpretive. To belong to Jesus now takes on a whole new meaning. What Peter does not understand, what he will comprehend later, is that Jesus' act of service, his act of friendship and love, what he does in the foot washing prefigures, prefigures Jesus' act of self-giving on the cross. In both acts, Jesus is seeking to be in solidarity with us to the very end. And Monday Thursday, well, Monday Thursday is about this unity, is about this solidarity that Jesus wants and desires with us. It is why this evening we practice foot washing and commemorate Christ's last meal with the disciples, to share in these actions of service and communion is what belonging to Jesus looks like. Now, Peter, Peter is all of us who struggle to make sense of why God would go to these extraordinary measures to be with us forever. Like Peter, it's hard to comprehend that the whole story of Jesus is about God desiring our company, desiring it so intently, desiring it so passionately, that God would make human flesh and human life the very sight of God's divine presence. How to still is how this desire of God will be tested to the breaking point. Not by Peter's passion, but by the passion of Jesus in the events that follow this night. For as it turns out, the world we have created would rather crucify Jesus than welcome the unity, peace, and healing that he brings. We would rather turn to violence than see our own lives transformed by the God who is eternally God with us. And like Peter, this might be the greatest struggle of all, of how it is and why it is that his teacher and our savior would go to such great length to show us how much we are loved. Amen. Fellow servants of our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. He taught that strength and power in the reign of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. As a sign of our commitment to follow Jesus' example, you are invited to come forward to have your feet washed 
and to wash the feet of others.
we continue on the top of page six of our bulletins, page six. <coughs> The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. As we begin these sacred three days and prepare through fasting and prayer to celebrate the Paschal Feast, let us earnestly pray to God for all these eatings tonight with Christ and for all peoples everywhere. For the Holy Church throughout the world, sharing the death and resurrection of Christ. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For Kim, our bishop, and all who minister in Christ, for all in the holy people of God, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For all nations, peoples, tribes, clans, and families, God of love and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For justice, mercy, and peace in all the world, God of love and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are tempted, oppressed, afflicted, or in need, especially, God of love and mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have gone before us under the sign of faith, and for all the departed especially, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. For our families, friends, and companions, and for all those who lo we love especially, God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You give us food and drink as the body and blood of Christ. Receive the prayers we offer this night for all those in need in every place and grant that all who come to your table may love and serve you and one another. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
one with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we'd fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died for Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Our honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones.